You know, inflammation can be very detrimental because you've got the brain that's encased in the skull. It's in a confined space. And normally when you have inflammation, you have swelling. Empowering you organically, delivering content you trust with results you love. Hey everyone, welcome to another podcast of Empowering You Organically. We are excited to have Amazon John Easterling back with us again for a second time. We had him on last week and we had a fascinating podcast on brain health. So we're back to talk a little bit more about that and dive deeper into brain health. I want to touch a little bit on Amazon John and his background. Since 1976, John Easterling has been an explorer and treasure hunter in the Amazon rainforest. It was there after a personal health crisis, he was introduced to the traditional use of medicinal plants by the indigenous people in Peru. Since then, his passion for plant medicine has only accelerated. John's original degree is in environmental studies. He founded the Amazon Herb Company in 1990 and serves on the board of the Amazon Center of Environmental Education and Research. John's 28 years of plant medicine experience have been profiled on TV and radio, including Good Morning America and Fox and Friends. His product formulations have sold over 100 million worldwide. John has been featured in two PBS documentaries, World News Report, Amazon John and Rainforest Medicines and Return to the Amazon. John believes the dramatic growth and interest in plant medicine is still in its early stages and will continue to significantly improve life experiences and healthy outcomes into the future. To learn a little bit more about John and his background, you can go back to our podcast from last week. We dive a little bit deeper into his background and how he came to be at this point in his life, experiencing life with the indigenous people in Peru, his treasure hunting and how that's evolved over time into natural medicine and plant medicine. Really, really fascinating. I highly encourage you to go back and listen to it to get a feel for more of what he's done in his past. Uh, incredible stories, no doubt. So last week on the podcast, we talked about what we can do. Uh, we talked about Alzheimer's and dementia and how it's impacting our society. And we talked about what we can do as far as our health, diet, exercise, sleep, and beyond to support a healthy brain and just a healthy body overall, um, but more specifically the brain and what we're seeing with the brain and brain health when it comes to aging. Today, we are going to dive a little further into actual ingredients that you have stumbled upon that are impacting people in their health and supporting a healthier brain. So talk a little bit about that and how you, let's, let's just touch on that briefly, how you stumbled on these ingredients. I don't wanna to go too far down that path because we talked about that last week, but how you stumbled upon these ingredients and how, you, how they came to be a part of your life and your diet personally. Well, they, they, as you know, Terry Ann, they really changed my whole life experience. Uh, when I was in the rainforest early on, about 30 years ago, I was introduced to a variety of botanicals that they made for me originally uh, as a tea, and then I've been working with those and uh, many, many uh, others over the past 30 years. Things like Wonya de Gato is very common in the Amazon uh, rainforest, primarily known for its uh, ability to stimulate the macrophage phagocytosis activity, which is our immune system. And it has a series of oxindole alkaloids in the inner bark that really help do that. Now we're seeing how anti-inflammatory it is as well. So, you know, these botanicals, uh, something like they have a synergy, like a whole plant as opposed to an isolate. Uh, it's called like an entourage effect so that different chemistry in that plant helps to modulate the expression of other chemistry in that plant. We used to think this plant is good for this, right? But that's just because we've been trained in an isolate model like this. Perhaps this uh, drug or this pharmaceutical is good for this because it is an isolate and it does one thing. But a plant, when you do a full plant extraction, you get the synergy, not only of all the chemistry that's there, all the nutritional factors, all the energetics, and each one of those is in this plant in a specific profile for a reason and the way it expresses itself. So um, 
when you when we talk about the earlier plants that I've done, as it turns out, we find more and more uses for those plants because of the modulation, the expression of the other things that are in that. And when you is uh, is one, you know, it just comes to comes comes to mind. Uh, first, we're using it as an immune support. It's a wonderful antioxidant, immune support, things that are very, very important uh, in, in brain health. Uh, it's a, a potent anti-inflammatory, again, very important in brain health. But more than that now, when we're looking at brain health with the uña de gato, is a brain-derived neurotropic factor, meaning that it has the ability to uh, put into play this uh, uh, protein, this, this, this synthesis of, of this neurogenesis of actually building new brain cells. And that's really uh, important. There's a few other things that are also brain-derived neurotropic factors. So when you say, what are you gonna look for in a, in a formula? You want something with some brain-derived neurotropic factor uh, type of ingredients. And cat's claw is a great one in that it uh, not only has that, it has the other important constituents, especially in brain health with the anti-inflammatories and the immune health as well. Yeah, let's and let me just let me just lay some groundwork here. In our previous podcast, we talked about Alzheimer's and dementia, the the placking and the tingling, and and you can get more educated on that in the previous podcast. But we talked about the fact that it's not only about prevention before it happens, and once it does happen, sustaining where you are and just maintaining but also the fact that we can see some reversal there. And so some of these ingredients you're talking about, you know, the cell regeneration and repair, that's what we're talking about there. When we're talking about brain health and how this can really impact people um, when it comes to a healthy brain, when it comes to Alzheimer's, dementia, some of these things that you've stumbled upon and that you're doing research around are not only preventing things like Alzheimer's and dementia, but they're also helping to support and maintain a healthy brain even when you get to the point for those of us that get to that point where we're diagnosed with Alzheimer's or dementia that we can actually see some reversal there. So fascinating, so fascinating. It's such an amazing conversation to have with how prevalent that is in our society right now. So Mm -hmm. let's talk about um, the major, before we get too far into the ingredients, let's talk a little bit about the major causative factors in aging brains and what we're seeing. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the ingredients and how that ties back to it. But what are some of those causative factors? Uh, well, you know, as we as we talked about last week, you know, it seems to be once people hit 65, they're, they become at a super high risk. It starts off at 65, one out of 10 have dementia. And then for people that are over 65 years old, one third of the deaths are going to be the dementia. So it's huge. It's a bigger cause of death than both prostate cancer and breast cancer combined. So it's a, it's a big issue. Lifestyle changes are important, you know, anti-inflammatory type of a lifestyle. Uh, watch out for the fungus, yeast, and molds that come from, uh, in particular, with overuse of antibiotics. It can set up a systemic environment in your body that's, that's going to be very detrimental uh, to your brain and the rest of your body. Exercise, you got to get that circulation. you got to get the new blood flow, fresh nutrients going through, or you become even at a higher risk. So those things you can do. Now, if we look at the some of the specific ingredients, and you're right, we're looking at not only trying to slow it down or prevent it, we're looking at kind of reversing this, this process. And this is what's really exciting. And this is what the research shows in rats. If you look at the mice studies and the rat studies on a lot of these in, ingredients and or some of the uh, individual components of these ingredients, you're gonna, that's what you're gonna see. You're going to see that in uh, like Bacopa uh, is one of the botanicals here that's uh, been very well uh, studied. And here's a, a just a, uh, an abstract, Bacopa extract reduces brain amyloid levels in mice by as much as 60%. So we're talking about this accumulating there, not just trying to stop it and, and, and save that. We're talking about reducing that by 60%. There's other uh, ingredients here, quercetin. Uh, resveratrol, uh, a lot of your polyphenols, um, all of these things are really, really important in actually, you know, breaking that down. So the causative factors, 
we would say uh, if you look at someone with Alzheimer, when someone dies of Alzheimer and you really look at their brain, there's normally, uh, almost every time, lots and lots of this amyloid placking in it. So you could say that the amyloid placking is the brain's natural response, an inflammatory response to an insult. So the virus, yeast, fungus, mold, bacteria, uh, injury, something has insulted the brain. So it wants to go encapsulate that to keep it from harming it. So it encapsulated it with this amyloid placking, but then the placking itself becomes uh, an issue for you know, proper uh, uh, neuron uh, processes. So that's one thing, a tau tangle, which is also where the, uh, you get a lot of the, the, the neurons into these uh, tau protein tangles and things that can dissolve that, like uh, uh, cinnamidolehyde can uh, help break that down, which is part of cinnamon. I love cinnamon. It's, uh, it's so common, but so misunderstood and, and unappreciated for its you know total therapeutic value. We think it's just to put in baked goods, cinnamon, yeah. right? I mean, that's what and most people look at. put a lot of it, it in as... there while you're putting it in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just dump it in. I love cinnamon. Yeah, I do too. Um, things like uh, vitamin C as an anti-inflammatory is very important. And so that's why you see camu camu. One of the reasons you see camu camu, and it's funny with the camu camu, uh, Martin, uh, who, who runs our plantation in Peru of camu, Many, many years ago, it's been probably 20 years now, he came and said, John, we really should be, you know, plant some camu camu here in this floodplain. And it's underwater three months of the year. And I said, well, you know, that's known for its, it's, it's the highest source of naturally occurring vitamin C. And so that's kind of nice, but, you know, vitamin C is not, I'm in the rainforest, you know, vitamin C, I'm looking at something a lot more exotic than that. But I said, okay, let's do that. And he's, he's the kind of guy that's got this perception and this, this vision that I never question when he comes up with an idea. And well, I do question it, but then I always say, okay, let's do, let's mm-hmm. do what you're thinking here. And when we had our first camu uh, harvest, our first camu berry uh, harvest, and, and the plant itself, like I say, when the rains come in the rainforest, it rains a lot and the water levels arise like 30 feet. So they, they come up the, the, the river bank and go into the camu fields and then just keep going up and just cover up the plants completely underwater for three months. So you would think they would die, but then when you dig those out, boom, they just spring right back to life. You know, they love that water. And one of the great things about that is that because it's bringing the floodwaters in, it's bringing that rich biomass of the entire rainforest to these camu fields. You know, we never fertilize it. We don't do anything. We just put them out there. And so all the plants in the rainforest, 100,000 species, are contributing their leaves, their stems, their uh, branches, the trees fall over. They're contributing all of their chemistry, all the energetics, all their nutritional factors to that rich biomass. The rains pick that up and bring it, it straight there. to our camera. That's so beautiful. It is so beautiful. And so they, for their own life experience, they can reach into that biomass and pull out, you know, this extraordinary profile, you know, of chemistry, of, of, of intelligence, of, of uh, nutritional factors. And so I remember when we first harvested the camu, dried it, and I, I, I ground it up into powder, and I licked it. And yeah, it was kind of tart, like you'd expect something with that country of vitamin C. But within one minute, you know, I, I said, this is not about vitamin C. Something happened. It shifted a biological terrain. And now we know what was happening because it increases the proper uh, cycling of serotonin. So I would, the, your, uh, you know, neurotran- your feel-good neurotransmitter. Mm-hmm. And so I was just feeling really good. Everything became really positive and, and, and bright and it's like a little more social, a little more Just from licking that out of your hand. Yeah, from, that from licking the camu. Of, right, from the plant. And I said, it's Martin, amazing. you're brilliant. You know, it's not about vitamin C. This is about a lot of other things going on. So now we know it's uh, this huge profile of polyphenols and leucine, valine, serine, which are important amino acids that are, are really cool because if you don't have enough of those in your diet, it results in moodiness and depression. So it's wonderful for that aspect. 
And now what we're seeing is, in some of the new research, these amino acids break down these tau tangles that we were talking about. Right. So you start off with this plant for one thing, and then you recognize it's got this powerhouse profile that can do so much. Yeah. So as we see the individual research on some of the uh, some of the chemistry of these things, you think, wait a minute, you know, we have it in a in a synergistic entourage form with a profile of other things that can really help naturally modulate the expression in a healthy way yeah. of that chemistry in this plant. Yeah. So it's so beautiful when you think about that imagery of all the water coming down and contributing to this plant. And then what you just spoke about, I mean, you're not suffering from Alzheimer's or dementia, but you lick this powder and how it impacts you from doing that. But then you talk about how it, it goes into the brain. It's multifaceted and what it's helping with. I mean, serotonin levels and how it impacted you there, but then it's going in and it's breaking down these tangles, which are contributing um, to poor brain health. It's just fascinating. I love that imagery yeah. of all of that working together and then how it comes to help in so many different ways. And I think that's the beauty in, in plant medicine. And you know, just in being transparent, one of the reasons we wanted to connect with you is because of your background in plant medicine. And you know, we talk a lot about uh, at Organics having products that are blends. We're passionate about that because it's getting all of these benefits out of one product. And I know that's something that you're well versed in as well. And when we came to you wanting something for brain health, um, it's beautiful that all of these things coming out of the Amazon support the brain health. And we knew you had all of this education and information. And so we've actually formulated a product with John for brain health. And whether or not it's our product or another product that you take, this information we're going to talk about with the ingredients that you've brought to us, which are so beautiful it's so beautiful i've heard you talk about these before and we're going to talk about them now um, but be looking for some of these things because um, the research and the information that's coming out mm -hmm. of this and some of the work that you're doing and how this benefits people with their brain health and supporting a healthy brain is just um, fascinating so i want to go through these ingredients and talk a little bit about each mm -hmm. one of them um, just to give you the list there's camu camu cat's claw Bacopa, cinnamon, cacao, pod arco, dragon's blood, and wayusa. Mm -hmm. Did I say them all right? You I did. tried to. We've talked about them quite a bit, so I hope yeah. I have them right. And I've learned quite a bit just from listening in the past. Um, so let's go through those. We just talked about Camu Camu. That was such a beautiful mm -hmm. story and how that all happened. And you're always going to trust your friend now, right? Moving forward. That was such a powerful I, he saved experience. saved my life over the years. Such a yeah. powerful experience always. in seeing what he brought to you and how that benefited you. Let's talk a little bit more about Camu Camu and, um, mm -hmm. and some more of the research you're seeing behind it. You talked about the serotonin levels. You talked about breaking down those tangles. What else are we seeing with Camu Camu that's so important when it comes to brain health? When it comes to brain health, if you look at individual or research is done on individual ingredients, you'll find like quercetin is uh, excellent for brain health. The whole broad spectrum of polyphenols uh, are good for that, resveratrol. And all of these things are found in camu camu. It just happens to be one of those plants that really has all of these factors. And from the, from the beginning of my experience with camu camu, I recognize that this is one of its this is i think its main its main uh, uh purpose or main place in the world and so we can see what the chemistry is doing and then we can understand and perhaps have a knowingness of what else we're getting maybe at a subconscious level which would be the intelligence the plant intelligence of a hundred thousand species of plants coming into that biomass that are in there and in minute degrees, or at least the imprint of that is in the camu camu, which makes that important. Some other important uh, ingredients you might want to look at would be the epicatechin and the, uh, like I say, brain-derived neurotropic factor, which would take us to uh, the next thing on the list there, which is a uh, cat's claw. Uh, not only do you have the immune support and, and the anti-inflammatory support, and pretty much uh, 90% of everything that's in this formula, also one of the benefits individually is an anti-inflammatory. So we're talking about an inflammatory issue here, I believe, uh, first of all. And then all these other sub-ingredients are working very specifically to mobilize, to improve cognitive function, the brain health, you know, the, the mood, the attitude, 
and uh, the ability to uh, perform self-confidence, uh, memory, uh, focus, uh, the ability to learn new learning, uh, you know, neurogenesis in the brain where we're learning new things and storing that data in a place that we can recall and just building, building uh, the gray matter. So uh, that's Camu, uh, Oñe de Gato. Bacopa is actually an Ayurvedic plant, but I couldn't leave it out because, you know, it's a member of the plant kingdom and it's got... It's right in there. It fits, it fits right in and it's got uh, really good research around it on reducing amyloid placking and increasing cognitive uh, function uh, uh, for people. So there's, there's rat studies, there's some, uh, some people studies as well. So there's uh, some really great data on that particular plant, specifically with kind of Alzheimer's, dementia, uh, brain health uh, issues. Off the top of your head, what's, the, what's probably the most fascinating thing you've seen come out of the research that you've seen on that particular ingredient? Is the degree to which it uh, dissolves and eliminates the amyloid placking, like up to 60% uh, in mice. Wow. I mean, that's a huge reversal. Huge. Because... 60%. Yeah. Think about that. That's huge. Well, you think about it because if you look at the Alzheimer's Association or you know, these really large organizations that, you know, with a good heart are trying to embrace this huge patient database of people and share information with them. Mm -hmm. I mean, even in most of the data you'll see is, well, once you start getting Alzheimer's and dementia, there's really nothing you can do. It's just going to be a progression. Yeah. And, and yet what we're seeing is, with the latest data here on a lot of these botanicals and the plants, is no, wait a minute, you can reverse that 60%. Yeah. Uh, after, after and, and they take these mice and intentionally put them in a position where they're loaded with amyloid black. So they're well down the track and we're seeing, we're seeing that, that reversal. Well, and talk about the, you know, the fascinating side of that being this pharmaceutical versus natural medicine conversation that's going on. And I, you know, when we talk about plant medicine and supplements, um, you had spoken in our last podcast about how they're kind of putting the brakes on research and pharmaceuticals and how they can impact Alzheimer's and dementia and reverse it or, or improve brain health because they're just not seeing a lot there. But when we go to the plant medicine side of things, when we go to the natural medicine side of things, there's plenty of research and information around ingredients that are doing the very thing they're putting the brakes on. And so I love this conversation of natural medicine and plant medicine coming back to the forefront of being something that can turn this around in our society. It's so prevalent, it's becoming such a huge issue. And so I think when you talk about it like that, it just sheds a new light on what we can do to um, improve our brain health overall. So we talked about, did we, so now we're on to cinnamon. Let's talk about mm -hmm. cinnamon. I love this one. Um, I've heard you talk about this one, cinnamon and cacao. Those were the mm -hmm. two when we've been talking about these ingredients that blew me away the most and, and what goes on behind them as far as how they um, can benefit you. So let's talk about those a little bit, those two. Yeah, cinnamon and cacao. So cinnamon has these uh, cinnamaldehydes that are actually been shown to break up some of the tau uh, tangles that we talked about as one of the causative factors of, of the progression of this, uh, this issue, which is really nice. And then even smelling cinnamon or eating cinnamon, there's a little study done where uh, uh, two groups were taking a test. I mean, they divided it up. One group got cinnamon, a cinnamon chewing gum, uh, and or just smelled cinnamon before they took the test and had higher test scores. Wow. So it, it affects something. Now, I don't know if it's untangling the towel tangles that quickly, instantly, but it's just doing- Just from the scent. It's doing something. Uh, maybe we don't completely understand exactly what it's doing, but we do see the outcome on that. And cinnamon is also an anti-inflammatory um, as well and helps to balance the blood sugar levels. So we know sugar levels, especially when you're looking at the yeast and the candida, some of these other offenders, um, you know, is a systemic thing. So I, I like cinnamon for all of those reasons. And like all these plants you're talking about, there's multiple reasons to like them as opposed to perhaps some isolates uh, from these. And, and that's simply because since we've 
crawled out of the cave, you know, we've been eating plants. Our bodies understand plants. We've been dependent on the plant kingdom for food, shelter, for medicine. So when we're eating plant compounds, our body understands that type of chemistry, those profiles of chemistry. When we're eating an isolate, the body has trouble trying to figure that out. It may do something, it's going to do something, but then it's going to cause other issues to come about because the body doesn't recognize that. Trying to figure out as, where it goes and what it does and how it fits into the system where it doesn't belong. Yeah. Yeah. So we like that. Yeah. So uh, that's cinnamon. Then cacao, and I, I love cacao. I mean, cacao for so many reasons. A, anti-inflammatory. It, it really helps microcirculation. Uh, we mentioned about how circulation is really important, how exercise is so important. And to facilitate that microcirculation in the brain is really, really uh, critical. It also has these epicatechins in it, which have been shown to be very helpful for uh, brain chemistry and to help to slow down the death of healthy brain cells. You know, they're all going through a cycle. They're being born, they have a lifespan, they break down, more being born. It helps preserve and keep healthy the cells that are there. And some of the other things cause a neurogenesis, like the cat's claw, for example, which stimulates the production of new brain cells. So you have the ability to learn new things, more memory, uh, and more learning capacity. And you slow down the apoptotic effect where the cells are dying, and you can actually be growing uh, new brain cells. So, so cacao is... is so I, powerful. Yeah. So, so much we don't know. Most people don't know about it. Yeah. Don't know all of the benefits of that. Um, before we go on to the next ingredient, you've mentioned many times anti-inflammatory. And many times on this podcast, we've talked about inflammation. Inflammation is our way of knowing, our body's way of knowing something's wrong. And so when you talk about the power of some of these ingredients as anti-inflammatories, Share a little bit about your knowledge around inflammation in the brain, why it's important to have ingredients that benefit you from an inflammation perspective and decreasing inflammation in the body, but what we're seeing with inflammation in the brain, because I think that's really, really important for people to understand. It's another way for our body to know something's wrong, but specifically in relation to the brain. Uh, specifically in the brain, um, you know, inflammation can be uh, very detrimental because you've got the brain that's encased in the skull. So it's in a very, it's in a confined space. And normally when you have inflammation, you have swelling, right? Absolutely. Swelling and inflammation uh, pretty much go together. So if you get a big inflammatory response happening in the brain, if the brain's seeing something as a big enough insult to where it's really starting to inflame, uh, you can be in a very, you know, a very critical and time sensitive, dangerous uh, position. So inflammation in the brain is something you want to uh, not subject yourself to. So all these smaller things that are just a continuous uh, progression of these issues are normally a result of something that's stimulating inflammatory response to, to that. And, and it's going to be the, uh, the, the placking or something like that where the brain is seeing something come in, viruses, fungus, mold, bacteria, some kind of insult, injury, and really try to uh, prevent that from contaminating other parts of the brain. So we'll try to isolate that and secrete this substance around it to say, okay, I'm protecting my, myself here. Yeah. But then that in itself becomes an issue to uh, run the nervous system, the neurons, and yeah. Uh, get across it's synaptic. really interesting wow. too when you think about that we're learning more and more about the brain all the time you just talked about the research around candida and and what we're seeing with that in the brain and things we didn't know before and so i think that's a fascinating tie to that conversation um where brain health is so critical and we don't even know all the things that are impacting our brain we're still learning um and and that conversation of inflammation as well Next ingredient on the list, pod arco. Let's talk uh -huh. about this one. Well, it ties right into the to your candida point. So, uh, people who are really familiar with uh, herbs and botanicals and herbology, we look at pod arco and think, well, why, you know, why is that one in there? And the reason is that you know the latest data 
uh, is showing, and this is this is new as of you know last month, some, some study, and it needs to be repeated and and go forward, but it shows that the candida can actually cross the blood-brain barrier, and when it does that, then you've got an insult to the brain. And the issue with the candida is it's so widespread in the population because primarily because of over use of antibiotics and not repopulating uh, the microbiome with the proper probiotics and diversity of, of uh, microbes. So, and people normally don't do that. They go through a round of antibiotics and then the yeast, uh, it kills off the, the, micro, the bacteria that are keeping the yeast in check. You know, I guess, I guess we have to think about the microbiome. Okay, you've got hundreds of kinds of, of diversity and strains of, of my, microbials, uh, bacteria, yeast, fungi, mold, that are living in our gut, that are there, they have a colony, they're doing a job, they're, they're good, they're good for us. It's when this colony becomes imbalanced, and you imbalance that colony with antibiotics, and antibiotic kills bacteria, right? And there's a lot of good bacteria there that gets killed. And so the fungus side of the equation now has free run because it's not being kept in check. So the candida really launches out. And too often I see people being treated for candida with more antibiotics. And so it becomes Creating so a, bigger, a chronic issue. issue for Just them. A, yeah, a vicious cycle. Uh, a vicious cycle. So you really need to treat uh, the fungus and the candida with an antifungal uh, type of an agent. And that's why Podiarco is there. Podiarco is a beautiful antifungal, anti-candida, uh, uh, barks the inner bark of a tree, grows in Brazil. And it grows in an area that a lot of other trees around it will have yeast to fungi, mushroom things, different things growing on them. And this one never does because it has this antifungal uh, amazing. properties. That's amazing. It's also anti-inflammatory, also has polyphenols in it. So if we can stop, uh, I mean, you see the use of antibiotics, you see the, uh, the issues of Alzheimer's and dementia, both rocketing like this, and you begin to understand there may be a correlation yeah, here. Yeah, scratch your head a little bit, what's happening and between the two. And it's candida is could be a real part of that because it's systemic it goes through your whole body and now we just found out that it can pass through the blood brain barrier so then we know it's an insult we know it's going to create an inflammatory issue there we know it's going to create that that placking so if we can keep that under control with a podiarco and enjoy the other benefits it has to go along with that then we're addressing this in a place that uh that is brand new. And so I like to address it from, from look at all the causative factors and angles and see if we can develop a, a profile of things here that are, that are synergistic that are going to interfere with those processes and reverse those processes and have positive benefit uh, outside of that as well. Awesome. I love that. It's incredible, incredible all of these plants that you've discovered that most people have never heard of and what they can do um, for your health. So the next one is Dragon's Blood. I just love the name, but let's talk yeah. about Dragon's Blood. <laughs> Dragon's Blood, and I've, I've called it Sangre de Drago for so long, I'm trying to convert to Dragon's Blood, which is the, would be the English translation for it. And the, so the Dragon's Blood is a tree, a very fast growing tree, lives in the Amazon, and it gets about 30 feet tall in just like three or four years. You hit it with a machete, Croton Lachiri is the botanical name for the tree, and it bleeds as sap, uh, just like blood. And so it's kind of gives us an, an, an indication of something, right? This is important. If you dry that sap, it's like 90% proanthocyanidin. It's like a pure antioxidant by dry weight. So what we have is a dried uh, resin of that sap uh, that's part of this product. And those anthocyanins have been shown also to be very helpful uh, with all these brain issues, not only as an anti-inflammatory, but helping facilitate the, the breakdown of that, that placking and, uh, and all the other issues there. So this is really important. It's a, you know, because it's almost pure antioxidant, almost a pure proanthocyanidin, and it doesn't take a whole lot of it 
to really be synergistic with everything else uh, going on there. I love it. And the last thing on the list is Wayusa. Did I say that right again? You did. Okay, good. Yeah. Let's talk about that one. Yeah, Wayusa, that is a, a plant that was uh, introduced to me by, by a gentleman. He was in his 70s, and I was at our camu fields in, in Peru, and he was collecting uh, Sarsa Perea for us. And he would go out, he collected in this area that was infested with shishupes or, or rattlesnakes. No one else would go there, but it was the best source of parade. I wouldn't go, I don't <laughs> like snakes. You would not find me there at all. Uh, I don't blame uh, people for not wanting to go there. Uh, but he was, a, he, he was just a, a, a brilliant guy, and he paddled up with his four-year-old daughter. So I always listen to what he has to say. And I was having a conversation with him, and his daughter was just so bright and clear and, and happy. And I said, what do you, you know, what do you do in your village for, uh, you know, for like, like brain health and happiness and, and these things? And he said, they did, he said when the mothers, when they were breastfeeding, uh, they would make a tea out of Wayusa and the mothers would drink it and it made the babies smarter. Wow. And I thought, well, that's really fascinating and yeah. so he gave me some Wayusa and I took it home and his deal was put five leaves in a in a liter of water and just let it sit overnight then drink it the next day so I did when I got back to Florida and I there was nothing I was I was waiting for something to really happen it was like nothing really happened it was very very subtle but what I did notice was it's one of those days when the phone would ring and you would kind of know who it was before you picked it up. That's when we actually picked up phones yep. off our desk. You know? <laughs> Way back when. <laughs> Way yep. back when. Yep. And then I was drawing, I was working on a label for a horse formula, and I had this spiral, this kind of the galactic spiral uh, drawn out with stars in the background. And I went to lunch at a restaurant, and I'm waiting for a table, and I looked on the wall, and there was my label. It was in a picture, almost just like the label that I was drawing. Now, that's, that's unusual. But the most important thing that happened to me, which really got my attention around Wayusa, was when I was driving home from work that night, and I would pass a, a service station, a gas station. And I would look at the gas station. I had this memory of when I was in high school. I had a Camaro, and I had friends that had you know Mustangs or... Uh, you know, different different kind of, kind of cars like, like we'd love to have back then. And on the weekend, we'd go sit around and uh, polish our cars at the service station, right? And it was a pleasant memory. And then at the next stoplight, I had another memory. And I got home, and I th said, wait a minute. That's the first time I thought about that event since the event happened. It was a first-time memory. Because normally we recycle the memories, right? Mm -hmm. We're remembering the same things over and over yeah. again. So it's like it had reached down and just brought a brand new memory to light. Like, hey, how about this? Hey, remember that? And I wasn't trying to think about anything. It was just a brand new uh, memory. So that got my attention. So now there's, I haven't seen any research or anything like that to, to see if that's happening with other people. And it was very, very uh, subtle. But that's what we see with that. Now that one also has, and the reason it's being used, it's becoming very popular in America now as a, uh, as a substitute to other forms of caffeine, you know, to green tea or, or coffee or, or a variety of other things because it does have a certain degree of caffeine in that. So you see it's the lesser degree entity on the list. But when we talk about caffeine, uh, there's studies with caffeine, with Alzheimer's and dementia, that show it has a significant positive impact on people over 60. Uh, is, is drinking is heavy coffee consumption really slows down the progression of Alzheimer's and dementia. That was pretty interesting. That is really interesting. So really it carries interesting. a little bit of caffeine there, and then it has that other ability that I just described and why that was happening. Um, I don't know. So I, I just felt compelled that that had to be a minor uh, part of this formula. And I think, it makes, I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, 
So when it comes to all of these ingredients, and we, we spoke a little bit ago about blends and, and how important blends are, um, when we talk about this formulation that you've compiled and all these amazing ingredients in the synergistic blend, why? Why all of these together? I mean, obviously you've gone through all of the benefits and things like that, but let's talk about that synergistic blend and how important it is. Well, the, the synergy, you know, in the, in the plant kingdom, we call it an entourage effect. And the entourage effect has become a very popular term. It's actually coined by uh, Raphael Micholum in Israel. And he coined it around uh, cannabis because the research that he was doing with cannabis, people he was isolating uh, like CBD, for example, or THC. And he's the first guy that's ever isolated THC from cannabis, you know, back in the 60s. And I had the privilege to meet him in Israel at his lab in Jerusalem uh, last year and spend a little time with him. So he coined this term because what we're seeing in, in uh, cannabis is people are focused on different uh, cannabinoids, THC or CBD or CBG or CBC. And, and so those isolates are coming to market and then being mixed with oils or as soluble as a presentation. But what he clearly identified and seen it reproduced in Spain in research as well with, uh, with breast cancer is that the whole plant extract or the entourage effect, the entourage of all the other profile of ingredients there, not only the cannabinoids, but the terpenes, because the plant we talked about earlier uh, has all of these, uh, this chemistry and nutrition and information there to modulate the expression based on what our, what our body needs. So they're seeing a much greater effect uh, with cannabis with the entourage effect. And, you know, when they were getting excited about that, I said, well, that's just the way the plant kingdom works. You know? yeah. It's not just cannabis, but these other plants as well. It's the entourage effect of those ingredients. Um, for example, the anti-inflammatory effect with camu camu. When they did the research and said, hey, look, this has anti-inflammatory benefit. Well, we, it's because of the vitamin C that's in it. So they isolated the vitamin C and had, okay, you got this many milligrams of vitamin C. And then they ran the study uh, with the whole camu versus that same amount of vitamin C. And the camu full plant extract had more inflammatory benefit than the vitamin C. So they said, hey, there's something else going on, mm -hmm. which there always is that entourage effect, uh, that full profile of naturally occurring chemistry, nutrition, intelligence in that plant, modulating the expression. Our body understands that. It understands what to do, how much to do, and that's why it's so critical. So you have each plant with that, and then you combine these plants, um, and you get the entourage of the entourage. Yeah, they're uh, more powerful the together, and then it adds on to it. They're more powerful together. Yeah. That's, that's, and, and that's not always the case. But you want to select the plants that share certain similarities. For example, all these are anti-inflammatory. Many of them have polyphenols. Uh, several have epicatechins. Uh, several have the, uh, um, the, the, the ability to, to, to create a neurogenesis, the brain-derived neurotropic factor. So they, they just make a really nice family together. Yeah, it's absolutely just a beautiful combination of incredible ingredients, some of which many people will have never heard of before. But the research behind them and what they're doing um, when it comes to brain health is just incredible. So to close this out today, I want to talk about this synergistic blend and these ingredients that we've put together. We've talked here and there about the different um, benefits of taking all these ingredients together. But let's recap some of those that come to the top of your mind when it comes to this synergistic blend. You know, we've talked a lot about Alzheimer's and dementia and some of the reversal of that. Um, so talk a little bit about that, but also, you know, for people who aren't experiencing that, what they're going to see as far as cognitive function and brain health overall. Just talk to speak to some of those those benefits. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're exactly right, Terry. We've talked about a lot of the, the causative factors and the issues and how this addresses it, all that. But ultimately, okay, what are the benefits that we're really looking for? And it's the cog cognitive uh, uh, ability. So new learning processes, memory, um, the ability to uh, have a greater degree of confidence, uh, become more social, 
I mean, these are all, you know, when you have a healthy brain and strong recall and you're having a conversation and you remember the words you want to use and recall events that tie in, you know, that's what you begin to see if those things break down, right? You become uncomfortable because you're not recalling as well as you would like. And so there's, there's just a, a, you know, just how comfortable you feel in the world and about who you are. And especially if you're beginning to have new memories and actually not only recall the things that you've always already put into your database, but you're able to go to another level and recall things because all of our experiences since we were born, right, we, we were there when those things happened. And so that's imprinted someplace. Uh, but we tend to recall just a certain amount of things as we go through life. And when you have that deeper ability to recall other first time memories, uh, it's really rich. It's, it's amazing. Amazing. This has been absolutely fascinating. Um, truly, you have tapped into some of the greatest treasures in the Amazon rainforest and beyond. And your experience is benefiting so many people. I loved what you said in our first podcast about you've gone and found these treasures, but it's not just about finding treasures for you. And we're all finding treasures, but treasures that benefit so many people. Um, and I think you've you've truly tapped into this here and in so many of the things that you've done. So um, I appreciate you being here today. I appreciate the conversation. I appreciate your background and experience that you're sharing with the world. And I know I've learned a great deal about brain health that I didn't know before. So thank you for being here. Oh, thank you, Terry. No, I love, I love what you're doing. I love uh, what you're doing with organics. And I, I love your, your whole concept and your theory and what you're, the information that you're putting out to people and educated people are, are healthy people. That's absolutely That's true. Sure. I love that statement so much. Well, thank you so much. If you want to check out this podcast, you can go to empoweringyouorganically.com. We have show notes, cliff notes. You can download this podcast. We are also on iTunes, so please check us out there. We had another podcast that we filmed previously with John Easterling that released last week, so be sure to check that one out for more information. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you here again soon. Have a great day, everyone.